This is the Obro Owen Brody, and this is Wrestling with Entertainment. Hello, 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 and welcome to the show. It's Wrestling with Entertainment, bringing you the latest exclusive breaking news, previewing and reviewing the latest shows from WWE, AEW, New Japan, and everything in between every Saturday, and interviewing all of your favorite wrestlers on Wednesday on YouTube and CastBox. Sponsored by Rogue Energy. Use promo code Wrestling with E for 10% off your next purchase. I am, of course, your host, that guy, James J, alongside the leader of Squaw Squad, Kaliko Yachts. Do you know that bees die after mating? So basically, their life is honey, nut, cheerio. <laughs> well, that might be... I think it's time to retire, Kaliko. <laughs> Get it? Honey, that cherry up. Come on, man. You got to give me that one. Best that joke ever. And the American Scooter Dust. You know what? Fuck it. I can't top that. <laughs> <laughs> Take your bell. Get your flowers, Kaliko. <laughs> There we go. Give my flowers like OnlyFans models. Give them here. Give them all to me. <laughs> they give great headache. Oh, no. Unfortunately, it is not a great day for wrestling. As uh, earlier this week, uh, we lost uh, Super Genie, uh, Melissa Coates. Um, our thoughts and prayers go out to her friends and family. Uh, um, Scooter, can you maybe elaborate a little bit? Yes. Uh, Melissa Coates, Canadian professional wrestler, bodybuilder, fitness model, and actress. Uh, known for, of course, her gimmick as Super Genie the, in, on the independent circuit, being the valet of Sabu, as well as stints in WWE OVW, DSW, NWA Anarchy, and WSU. Now, unfortunately, when in my work with WSU, I unfortunately Melissa Coates was a little bit before my time. Um, she was trained by Killer Kowalski as well as Ultimate Pro Wrestling and Rick Bassman. Uh, Oddly enough, Coates is the only professional wrestler who ever made an appearance in the NWWL. I'm not going to reveal what that stands for, because if you know wrestling, you know what it is. And we are honoring the memory of Melissa Coates tonight, and this is probably not exactly a, a great thing to point out. Just that it happened. So I'll let y'all figure it out. When Coates began training in uh, Louisville for WWE at OBW, uh, her first appearance was as a uh, participant in the Master Lock Challenge of Chris Masters when he offered $3,000 to anyone who could break the Master Lock. Fortunately, she failed to do so. Uh, she became the head of security in OVW for Kenny Boland's stable Boland Services. Uh, after, however, she would leave OVW and WWE and went to work for WXW. Uh, and then returned to OVW, but not under a WWE contract. So she tied up with Beth Phoenix, Mickey James, Melina Perez, while realizing she would never actually again go to the essentially WWE main roster. Um, when when she went to Deep South Wrestling, her gimmick was the, the bag lady, a homeless woman. And funny enough, the bag lady character accompanied Natalia on her final appearance 
in W uh, in DSW. Uh, Coates uh, was involved in uh, this, that Bill DeMott controversy a while back. In, where she and Matt Cardona were subject to really heinous behavior. Um, and of course, in her time as Super Genie, again, the Valley of Sabu. Um, Coates, youngest of four children, a Bachelor of Science in Biology from Lakehead University. Um, at the end of last year, a GoFundMe page was created uh, to help Melissa Coates with medical issues. Uh, and, uh, and, 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 and yes, we did. We did plug that. Um, uh, she was experiencing excruciating pain. Um, she had several blood clots in her leg. Unfortunately, that led to the amputation of her left leg above the knee. Uh, and unfortunately, it's such a such a terrible way for the world to for somebody to face the world. This life-saving procedure essentially is what put her out of work. So, if you want irony, there it is. Uh, she she turned 50 no more than a week ago. Oh, God. And passed away. On the 23rd, five days after her 50th birthday. Uh, if you are ever feeling nostalgic, I don't know if it's streaming anywhere, but she was a part of the Game Show Network's Extreme Dodgeball. The game show that would eventually go on to inspire Dodgeball, the true underdog story. With that, Rest in peace, Melissa Goats. Absolutely. And it seems like maybe her, you know, contributions for, to the wrestling business were maybe a little on the hush hush, but we should definitely, uh, you know, celebrate her life. Absolutely. Uh, Kalika, you have uh, any, any last words? I mean, I think you hit it right on the head. Like, I, I think when we think of people contributing to wrestlers, every, everyone thinks about like the big names, but but it's also these these unsung heroes. I mean, you don't have to be on WWE or AEW or NWA or ROH or any other TV program to like make an impact or leave your mark in in the business. So. I mean, those who knew her, I mean, they they celebrate her life. They they know what she did. They know what she brought to the table. And and allow them to do that, do, uh, bestow that honor of continuing her legacy as far as her contributions to wrestling. So, I mean, rest in peace and... It, it it just sucks, man. It's like a lot of twenty twenty one had like a lot of athletes and wrestlers dying who are not like famous, famous, but if you know the business, you know who they are. So yes, it, it's it's just like it it's sucks. saddening, you know. It sucks like hell, you know. Yeah. Uh, once again, um, rest in peace, Melissa Coates. Um, our thoughts and prayers go out to the family. Now on to uh, 
a lighter subject, uh, last week on the show, we interviewed the old bro, Owen Brody. Um, that was a fun one. And I think uh, that was the most uh, in-depth, like, Wikipedia page interview <laughs> we've ever done on the show as well. Uh, oh, I told you, I tell everybody we're not the feds. So that's why, I try, <laughs> you know, because some people be thinking we, we them people. And we just got to let them know we ain't the people. Absolutely. I did talk to Owen, and he has yet to give me his his five songs. Even he if he said and uh he said, Oh damn, I, I didn't do that yet <laughs> and I said, You better watch yourself because Kaliko might come out to get you <laughs> You know what, Owen? Just right here. I, I'm I'm giving you the one time extension because you do a lot as far as writing and creating and and actually wrestling. So I'll give you the extension that most people don't. But I want my five. I want my five. <laughs> you hear that, Owen, if you're listening? Calico. Hashtag I want my five. Hashtag I want my five. I want my five. <laughs> uh next week on the show we got uh Robin Renegade. Uh if you think you've heard of that name before. You probably have. You've seen her on AEW Dark and Dark Elevation. Um, it's in, in the last, in the most recent of months. Um, incredible interview. Incredible. Uh, I think she and she's actually our first ever twin on the show as well, and that's very interesting as well, isn't it, Tito? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, oh, I just love the, I love the the biology and the chemistry of it. It's something it's something that fascinates me. The relationship between twins and the fact that you know we haven't yet quite yet got to cloning, <laughs> but we got twins. And the fact that you can not look in a mirror and see an exact copy of yourself has always just been fascinating to me. And I mean, we only had one twin on the show, and I mean, it's a wealth of content. And you get to know everything you want to know, and maybe some things you didn't even know you wanted to know about Robin Renegade. Uh, and if what? you're not completely sold on the interview, well, here's a clip of it right now. Squash. Fruit or vegetable? <laughs> One more time, please. <laughs> Squash. Fruit or vegetable? Uh, it's a vegetable. <laughs> Thank you. See, I knew. See that marine spirit. It's the marine bond. I got it. I felt that right there in my spirit. That's a vegetable. <laughs> Just because it's said doesn't make it so. It's actually. Oh, it's, a, it's actually it's a, fruit. A, a fruit. Great clip. What if she was really? That's true? Before it takes that turn. Before it takes that crazy turn. <laughs> Yeah, what uh, if it turns out to be Charlotte this whole time? I mean, she definitely <laughs> fooled us. I, I did ask her at the beginning of the interview, or can you confirm? And she did not confirm whether or not she was Robin or Charlotte. <laughs> she didn't mention the birthmark? Wink, wink. No. <laughs> uh, and then on July 7th, uh, Janai Kai, the baddest black belt. Um, we're talking about Robin being a renegade. Uh, Janai is a renegade of her own, kind of attacking every wrestling promotion out there right now, being just her badass self. So you definitely want to catch that one as well. Now that uh, we're done putting ourselves over, it's uh, time to get into the news. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Um. 
the other day, WWE decided to release another 13 superstars. Uh, among the 13 were uh, Davari, Tony Nese, um, Marina Shaf? Shafir, Marina Shafir. Shafir. But, Marina but, Shafir. I think that's uh, Rod, Roderick, Roderick, Strong? Roderick Strong's wife. Strong's yeah. wife. Yes, yeah. that's correct. Uh, Bollywood Boys, Court Stallion, uh, Marco Rujas, August Gray, uh, Killian Dane, Tyler Breeze, and Ever Rise. Um, what the hell's going on with NXT, Squiddle? Uh, this is. This is. Some of these are okay. Shocking. Some of these, some of these are shocking. Some of these are are, are a surprise. Um, but then again, I mean, the WWE has been doing this crap where they'll promote someone and then release them the next day. They. they it's it's freaking Indian giving at this point. Um, Everrise, they were putting stock in Everrise, and surprisingly enough, Everrise were tolerable. They were actually enjoyable to watch. They took what was probably going to be. Yeah, you know, we're we're always gonna be, you know, the enhancement talent, and turned it turned it into something that, you know, they they uh, turned it into the I guess you'd say the wrestling equivalent of a meme, which I guess is probably just one step up from being enhancement talent, but still, it's something. Like I mean, they got you, TV time weekly on NXT. I mean. Not to mention, it's also the second time somebody named Matt Martell has been released <laughs> from the WWE. Uh, I'm looking at you, Matt Stryker. Um, you know, Fandango and Tyler Breeze. I think it's complete bullcrap. They... They seemed like they were they were also running with everything they were given. And they took it with a smile on their face. Very right, true. And not to mention they were hilarious on the main roster. You know, we we talked about you know, Lana, when they fired her, you know, she wouldn't, would be able to make chicken salad out of chicken shit every single time. And that kind of seems like, you know, Brizango's, uh, and even Everwise at this point, kind of what they've been doing as well. Is it just no appreciation for the people that work hard, the hardest for you, or like what? You know, I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, you know, I, I really w- was looking forward to an arena, you know, singing along with, you know, the you know, Fandango theme song one more time. Um, I do it without them. They own the rights. Uh, but, um, you know, cha-cha-la-la. Um, but I mean, if uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see uh, Lombada and Taylor Wind in AEW. <laughs> God, uh, I hope you're not speaking shit into existence. <laughs> uh, Kurt Stallion and uh, Was August Gray. Stallion Gretchen. a part of Diamond Mind? Or am I getting? No, you're, 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 you're thinking of Tyler Rust. Okay. Which is a weird name for anybody. Um, but Kirk Stallion and August Gray, again, Anthony Green, 
We'll probably see them back in Limitless. Hey, we might even find him on uh, the show in the very near future as well. Um, I get uh, Killian Dane. He it seemed like he was getting over with Drake Maverick, who should we fired last time? Got <laughs> fired last time and friggin' got his job back. It's definitely I mean, very bizarre. <laughs> I mean, it's like. Do they not want spouses to be working together? Because because yeah, Dane is married to Nikki Cross. Who's a superhero now? Yeah, the, the Nikki Kane. Um, and and of course, the one that hurts me the most of all, my air quotes twin. A good twin. Well, if he's the good twin, I'm the great twin. Tony he's Nese. the good twin, you're the evil twin. <laughs> I mean, well, without a doubt, uh, Nice it will be headed for AEW. Oh, you, you're calling that already? I know. I know it for a fact. Um, uh, uh, John Silver and Alex Reynolds uh, have uh, or, already uh, put in a, uh, I guess, a, I guess you could say a request to Tony Khan. Oh, I understand. He goes, yeah, Tony, John, Alex, and and my and. Myself, you know, the uh, the four horse with the never got to be again. No, um, yes, knees headed to AW. Um, God, I mean, it's odd that the uh, Aria Devari gets released, Sean Devari gets brought back as an agent. This is oh, it's like the wild, wild west. In wrestling right now, no prisoners. Oh, uh, and if uh, Tony Nese does get signed by AEW, what are the odds of a uh, one scooter dust going down uh, down to Jacksonville, saying to security, "I'm Tony Nese," and maybe getting us an exclusive? I don't know. Do you think they'll believe that? Tony shrunk and is really hairy. I mean, he hasn't been on TV for quite some time, uh, so he might have. Um, yes, there's also one more name uh, on this list, uh, and that is the AEW trader himself, Tino Sabatelli. Hmm. Sounds familiar. Oh, that's the football player, isn't it? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. He, he uh, was the Tampa Bay, the Tampa Bay safety, Nick. Yeah, yes. linebacker one. Yes. Yeah, nobody cares about and, him. And yes, he was the one that was supposedly leaking W uh, AEW stuff to the WWE. Hmm. What about you, Kalika? What are your thoughts on all of this? <laughs> it's bananas. Uh, the. the Stockholders, stockholders make the world go round. Uh, but to me, it, it it does break in those categories. Shocking, Brizango, considering that they've been a staple, or they've been so good at their shit for so long. So I'm surprised that they were gone. Never got a shot. Um, August ever rise. I feel like they didn't get a shot. Um, Brizango were, were, were one time to NXT Tag Team Champions. I mean, August Green couldn't get off uh, 205, so... I mean, yeah, he couldn't get off 205. Killian Day, they were just, like, fighting with Hit Row. So that just threw me out, I guess. Yeah. But, but it's funny, because me and James were just talking about all of that, and 
And it's funny, uh, if you recall the NXT North American Championship ladder match to crown the first champion, there are only two competitors left in that match, Adam Cole and Ricochet. Everyone else is gone. Lars Sullivan, Killian Dane, Velveteen Dream, EC3. Gone. And that was th- three years ago. This goes to show you how the environment changes. But I- that's a wild change, though. And it just sucks. I mean, that sucks. It just truly sucks. August, he got to see his dream, but he didn't even get to see it come to fruition. Uh, same with Everrise. They got their dream. They didn't get to see it to fruition. At least with Brizongo, they, they've been through the highs and lows, but they've just been there, right? Same with Killian Day. Um, Tony Nese, mean, former Cruiserweight fan. No, I don't see that. I mean, it feels like with Killian Dane, they always wanted to try and do something with him. But he never got that legitimate win that cemented him as a main star. Because they always, he always took the liberties. You know what I mean? That's true, but at least he got in that spot, right? Like, him and Tony Nese, They've been in big matches. Tony Nese was a former cruiserweight champion. Yeah, man, he's got his right. He had his right. He got his WrestleMania moment. That's right. right. Like he got, he got it. I just feel bad for those who didn't even get the chance to get it. Right. Those are the ones I'm more I mean, like. My I heart goes out to. I mean, F- Fandango. I mean, his his first match was the WrestleMania moment. Oh, that's right. Pretty much WrestleMania weekend. It started the whole trend. I think 29 started the whole trend where the the Monday night Raw after, like, when when the show's over and everybody's leaving, people just started singing theme songs. Because 29, it was Fandango. 30, it was Cesaro like crazy. Everybody was just, like, singing that Cesaro, the real American theme song that he had. So, yeah, it's just, you know, it is what it is. I mean, it's pretty sad when you peak, you nearly peaked in your first match. But I think that's kind of what happened to Fandango. But I kind of blame that on us, too, though. We're fickle as shit. I mean, he also, was, well, he also was a tough enough winner. No, it was NXT. I'm... NXT winner. When it was, NXT was a reality show. Oh yeah, when then oh yeah, when they had the coaches and shit. Yeah, yeah, wait, are we? I thought Johnny Curtis, when he was doing the spilt milk stuff, I thought that was a tough enough contest. No, that was uh, NXT. That was an NXT because that was when they had the coach and Miz and Dan Bryan and yeah, uh, that class, right? Uh, that's when it was like on WWE. dot com Tuesdays and they. On, and they also tried it on Tuesdays, where it, like it was Titus O'Neil. He was like this super smart geeky guy and, or whatever. I mean, yeah. now where will I go to get my movie schedules and discount prices on movie tickets? Dreesangle.com. Can't go to Bendango.com anymore. I mean, you could go to ChaChaCharlie.com. That's still a thing, Fandango.com? Yep. Holy oh, shit. <laughs> Tells you how long I've been to a movie. <laughs> uh, earlier this week, uh, Karen Cross and Bronson Reed were on uh, WWE main event. Why? Did this happen? And what is WWE doing? Cross is possibly getting going to be on the main roster. Um, Reed, possibly, but I think they're just bringing Cross up and not bringing Scarlet, which is weird. Um, Makes absolutely no sense. And and with Reed, I feel like NXT, he's got more time to cook. He he needs to cook. He he needs to be down there, 
Well, NXT t- essentially is a third brand, but I think it's best fit for him. Um, for now, because from what I've seen, big dudes are not like the thing anymore in WWE. <laughs> unless you're Lashley or McIntyre, or you know, unless you're big and n- nimble in that sense, but like not big girthy guys. Which is sad. Now, uh, it's been an ad week in WWE. I mean, we had four Hell in a Cell matches in five days. Uh, Alexa Bliss had got new ring music, and Nikki Cross is now a superhero. Um, what? What's going on with WWE? Are they just drawing uh, uh, shit at the wall and seeing what sticks, or to defend Nikki Cross? It was her idea. Don't put that shit on WWE. Uh, Everything let me, else. Let me put it another way. What's up with that? I mean, oh my god! Shout out Hurricane. Molly Holly is, um, you know, on a trial basis with WWE as a producer. Is this for? Her first uh, little contribution. I mean, no, I, no, they, she she contributed a lot, and quite. For, I expected Nikki Cross to come out to the Hurricanes music. I think she said it was her idea, so Ooh. I don't know why we're putting that on. I mean, and, when it's her I mean, her baby, and the yeah, and then Gregory Helms is working as an agent. So we got the. The Hurricane and Mighty Molly as producers. Oh no, they they wouldn't do that to her. She unless she allowed it. I mean, they, they, as long as you uh, say, if, as long as you have permission. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> what? I'm not saying that it's maybe bad that she's doing this. I mean, I'm just it just kinda seemed like it came out of nowhere. I mean I kinda I, I kinda thought for a second she was gonna reveal that her name was Blue Pants. Lava Bates, shout out. <laughs> da, 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 da. Da, da, da 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 Uh you know, as long as she doesn't come down from the rafters, I think she'll be fine. Oh, Oh, God. Oh, James. Too soon. Even 20 years later, that's too oh, soon. Oh, <laughs> God. I, I, cr- I cracked some terrible, terrible jokes. And even I have my limits. <laughs> yeah, it's, I didn't say that oh, was a good joke or a tasteful oh, joke. I'm just saying oh, that. Oh, hold on. I got to take this phone call from Martha Hart. Yeah, we're canceled. So, going on to four Hell in a Cell matches in in a span of five days. Is this too much? Too much hell and too much cell. Is there any more hell in the cell? I mean. And then, eventually, you know, there's going to have to be, like, heaven in the cell at this point. Um, or but, Earth, because it's just as miserable. <laughs> but this is this is the equivalent of siblings where one gets something and the other throws a tantrum until he gets the same thing. That's what USA was doing. But like you gave Fox a Hell in a Cell match. It's only fair that we get one, too. There was no reason for Bobby Lashley and Xavier Woods to be inside the cell. Unless Xavier was winning. True. You think that Xavier is sitting there? No, I, it made no sense for him to be there. Yeah, the, the, beef is, the beef is Kofi, not Xavier. I mean, Kofi had more of a, a reasoning to be like, there than. 
but the, the, if they if they were won, he would have gotten the title match for Kofi. But then, then uh, Bobby Lashley already accept the championship match. Only on the night. No. No. I could have swear he did though. It was it just was... for honestly just to beat up Xavier Woods. That's how I saw it. Pretty, pretty much wrote him off TV for it, but I, I just yeah, it, it made no sense for Xavier to be there okay. unless he was a it, casualty. I, okay, it is happening. Yes. Unless we did yeah. accept. They they advertised Xavier as fighting for the right to get for Kofi to get the title match. That definitely didn't happen. Well, it was a one legged man in the ass kicking contest. That's what it was. So are we basically in wrestling purgatory, so to speak, until crowds come back? We're just doing Weird, stupid shit until we get to Ju- the middle of July. Uh, money, yeah. I mean, it, it, it all got to build some money in the bank. So something's going to have to get getting the most out of that, that mm-hmm. Thunderdome. They're trying to get the thunder at the Thunderdome. I mean... I mean, we're living in the era of dewdrop. Very true. Let let me go. No, that one it made sense. <laughs> oh my god, you <laughs> that made sense. Okay, Ignore I'm me. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you why. I gotta go, hold on, I gotta go take a dewdrop. When when Eva said the name, if you looked. Just slightly to your left, you saw the Piper go, what? My name is Piper, motherfucker. Like, yeah, like, she's fighting for it. So it'll get there. That's, that's just a little crack in, in the ceiling. Oh, I mean, considering that. The crack in the floor. Considering that she's, she's, she's already turned on Marie. Hey, hey, if, if there was ever a reason to. That name, homie. Don't you think this is maybe too soon? I mean, she literally debuted a week ago. Don't you? I'm not we saying let that. Stew, let it stir a little bit, let it simmer, and I mean, then I'm take so, the so, dude from Yes, and- yes. That's my point. It, it, th- if there was a genesis, that's the genesis. I'm not saying it's going to happen in the next three weeks, but if down the line, down it's to get heat on Eva Marie. Y'all, they already hate her. So why wouldn't they do some shit like this? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm honestly surprised after all that build-up, they didn't release her. What? <laughs> oh, uh, anything else in the news you want to bring up, Scoodle? Um, uh, Rumors are swirling that <clears throat> that we could see Becky Lynch and Money in the Bank. I thought that was a good uh, at this point. <laughs> yes, but it's going to it's going to happen in a way. She probably won't be advertised for it. She'll do it the way Brock did it. Yeah. Uh, oh, also, something very interesting. Uh, the WWE recently hired a stand-up comedian named Kenise Mobley, and she made headlines for her recent appearance on the Asian Not Asian podcast, where she revealed Wait, that is the she Asian or not Asian? She's. I'm not. I'm not going there. Um, <laughs> she revealed that the WWE did not require her to have any pro wrestling knowledge when they hired her, 
and she received significant negative feedback from fans for some of her other comments on Twitter and the podcast, including referring to the WWE champion as Bobby Ashley. <laughs> Uh, uh, she she put out a lot of stuff speaking publicly that the WWE did not want to be talked about, and this is a big thing considering that every WWE job listing has a requirement of a knowledge for pro wrestling. Uh, Mobley was released. And all the posts on Instagram and Twitter were either deleted or pri made private. Uh, <laughs> and Girl got fired before she could even fill out her damn W two form. Ain't that a bitch? Uh, I mean, she by by looking at her, she is. Of a either almost like the, the Rock, half Islander, half African American. Oh my god! Did you actually look that up? It was a joke. No, no, I no, It's just it's it's just by looking at her. It's it's Ew. one of the things, and somebody would would probably bring that up. You know, just just to you know, make a stir. Uh, yeah, but I mean, we we already knew that WWE signs writers that have no approximate knowledge of pro wrestling. That's not something new. Mm -hmm. So are we really, you know? Gasp, there's a, a, a writer who doesn't know what they're writing about? I mean, she, she revealed that in the, in the whole Bobby <clears throat> Ashley story, right? That she, oh, she really should know that that is really, you know, his, the, doesn't know if his name is Bobby Ashley or Bobby Lashley, and that she should really know that. Describing, oh, he's like this giant black guy, and he's the people who are part of his crew. I know that they call her, at least as of last year, they call themselves the Hurt Business. And then they wear suits, and they're like, we're cool. Very, very condescending. And at one point, she was shown a picture of a uh, performance center coach, Scotty Tuhati. <laughs> And her response was, who? And they said, no, it's not Jim Neidhart. Uh, she went on a date, and the date asked if she felt like she was lowering her dignity by working for the WWE. Like this is this is like, oof. Sounds like somebody wanted to get fired. Honestly, nah, he snitched on herself. He draft snitched on uh, herself. Like June fourteenth, her tweet. So excited to start my new wrestling job at WWE. Maybe somebody will finally tell me what a heel is, spelled H E A L. <laughs> and uh. Maybe we'll get her for an interview down the line. <laughs> ironically, I don't think she's doing any interviews anytime. I, ironically, she and we're gonna give her some a free plug here. She hosts a show on Tuesday nights on Instagram Live. <laughs> Oddly enough, called "Make Yourself Cry." <laughs> Mission accomplished. I know. I mean, you might as well you might as well close the show because she just—it's over. She just did it herself. Next week, WWE hires Lily Singh. Find out what happens. <laughs> oh my god, that'd be awesome. 
that will conclude our coverage of the news this week. Now a quick word from our sponsors. Rogue Energy, the only gaming drink company in the world with four unique product lines to suit your task at hand, whether it be juices, shakes, smoothies, and everything else in between. Their low-calorie, no-sugar energy formula is the perfect alternative to sugar-filled canned energy drinks and sodas. Their extreme formula provides the most energy, focus, and sports performance possible. Their hydration line offers focus, ingredients without the added caffeine. Drink it anytime you're thirsty. And their shake formula is so delicious. Who doesn't love a cookies and cream, zero-calorie energy milkshake? First and foremost, they've designed every Rogue product line with performance and effectiveness in mind. It is critical that you look at the nutrition panels of drinks when comparing options. There are countless off-brands out there that are presenting low quality, poorly dosed formulas that amount to expensive caffeine water. Every formula they produce is designed with optimal levels of high quality ingredients. Additionally, you won't find a powdered gaming drink brand that dissolves better. No need to have chalky textures in your drink. Their taste profiles are unmatched, specifically designed for gamers, athletes, students, entrepreneurs, people with hectic schedules, individuals with low energy, podcasters who can't shut up, people who are health conscious, and so much more. Great as both a pre-workout and as a coffee energy drink replacement. Specifically designed every Rogue product line to be the best gaming drink on the planet. Rogue energy, more energy, more focus, more wins. Use promo code Wrestling E for ten percent off your next purchase. Hey brother, do you have herpes? And we are wrestling with WWE Hell in a Cell review. It was last Sunday, and if you were smart, how to listen to it, Scooter? You listen to it on the remix only on UNB Sports 2. And, uh, yep. you know, WWE has been doing some pretty good Hell in a Cell pay-per-views. I will say that. Even if there's a clusterfuck of them, at least they're of some quality, I would say. Uh, but... What about you, Kaliko? What was your thoughts on the show as a whole? Uh, went every match went how we thought it would go, I, I would think. Except for, I think, a couple of games just chooses to veer himself off of. But everyone, everything else went the way it's supposed to go. I that got the real Ripley Charlotte thing right. What? Yeah, I called for uh, a smash finish, and it was. Okay, okay, mister. Okay. But, yeah, it, it went how it went. But then again, like we said, everything at this point is, is just trying to get to money in the bank to get to SummerSlam. So they're trying to get the crowd hyped for money in the bank, then let SummerSlam be their 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 baby pretty much for the summer. So there it is. Pretty what, good show though. What say you, uh, Scooter? I mean the cell I mean the the cell match is delivered uh, honestly, probably one of the from one of the best actual Hell in a Cell matches, where it really looked like it could have been either at at, at one point. Uh. Well, uh, let's get into it. I'm assuming, I'm assuming that's the main event, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay, because the Bianca Bailey one, it was kind of like, ooh. 
Battle of Souls SmackDown Women's Championship match. Bianca Belair defeated Bailey in 19 minutes and 42 seconds. Oh, uh, does this strengthen Bianca? Does this do anything for her title run, or is it kind of uh, a meh win, considering she beat Bailey already? It it's not a meh win. Because the stipulation, it it moves Bailey out the picture. Because Sasha is coming back, so I think the the logic is the rematch at SummerSlam. I think that the logic would all all arrows point towards uh, Bianca Banks too at SummerSlam, just based on the 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 sheer reverence of the match at WrestleMania. What's a you, Shula? I mean, if you really thought Bailey was going to walk out of this the winner, I have a bridge to sell you, but... This match, yeah, usually with Hell in a Cell... One is brutal in terms of the action, and one is usually brutal in terms of the storytelling of the psychological aspect. And th- this was this was this was the brutal one. This was the violent one. And is it was it was obvious, and it it takes something away from from a, a match when you when when you can be a hundred percent sure who's going to win. I know what you mean by that. That brings us to our next match. Seth Rollins defeated Cesaro in 16 minutes and 13 seconds. Um, you know, it's rumored that Seth Rollins might be wrestling Edge at um at SummerSlam. Uh, so do we think that this was just to get to a uh, Money in the Bank blow up, or is this going well into SummerSlam? Hmm. Well, considering that, considering that, you know, you would think, you know, this would be Cesaro's year for Money in the Bank. Um. You, it, you, know, it's, you said that uh, Cesaro would win the money in the bank. Uh, yeah, and then I and then I said Drew. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's very it's very odd when you've had you just had a you've just released so many people, and yet you have too many people for a match that's supposed to have a minimum of eight people. There's, isn't there eight participants in this year? Yeah, yes, there's eight, but there's a lot of extra people that could have been served by being in it. Cesaro being one of them. Well, that goes back to what I've said something in the past about money in the bank becoming too mainstream. And not giving, you know, the younger guys maybe the opportunities that they deserve. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah I mean... I mean... Technically... Technically, there is 
there are three more spots on SmackDown, so I guess I shouldn't Don't exactly. Go yeah, because uh, Owens and oh, uh, uh, yeah, because it's oh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Uh, and oh, by the way, uh, since we're talking about potential uh, edge match at SummerSlam, guess who returned last night? Who? Edge. You think we know him? And yet we don't. We still don't. Thirty years later. So, it's we could could we get Roman and Edge? I mean, again, would I mean Edge being in this year's Money in the Bank? Would be kind of cool to see. Kind of cool, but it does also take away from somebody that really deserves that spot. True. What about you, Kalika? What are your thoughts on the Seth Rollins uh, Cesaro match and the possibility of a Seth Rollins Edge match at uh, SummerSlam? Well, Seth getting the win, it kind of, it kind of makes it seem like it's not over, right? Right. Because you would have thought at the when Cesaro got the win at Mania, it was over, right? Yes. But this is the first time that I've seen in a while where a WrestleMania match was used to be the genesis of a feud. Because uh, think about it, uh, WrestleMania, then they had the Hell in a Cell. Uh, oh, WrestleMania, then Cesaro got the title match, so he got the springboard that everyone thought he would get. Um, he lost, and then Seth kind of came in and did what he had to do to continue it. So it kind of, it's one of those things where it's like, they're not done yet. Um but to be quite honest, I Seth could go with Cesaro or Edge, but I feel like Edge would Edge doesn't need the money in the bank to get to Roman, right? I, I would I would think so. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I mean, there's there's still that heavy rumor that it's Reigns and uh, John Cena and Seth Clem. Right. So, so my thing is the only way Cesaro at this point can even get back in the title picture is to win the money in the bank. But the problem is, is that both Raw and SmackDown don't have legit contenders that are face and heel on either program that could mesh with the champions and keep them busy until we emerge with the money in the bank runner. Because the problem is who, who would win it on Raw that you would believe that could beat Lashley, right? Or sneak up on Lashley? What? Or who, would you, who do you think is the challenger that can beat Lashley? Well, this is... Likewise on SmackDown. Th- there who do you was, think is credible to beat Roman? Th- there was a lot of rumor about Sending Big E back to Raw yeah. to be to be the one that faces Bobby Lashley instead. Now, of- continue, if they continue with this Kofi storyline, because that would make sense. You see what I'm saying? Xavier gets put out by Lashley. Kofi is getting whooped on by Lashley. Big E comes in and makes the save. That makes one thousand percent sense because. They're all tight like that. So you could, you, that's something that wouldn't be out of the realm of, you know, not normal. I mean, but even, 
But even I'm with like, that, SmackDown still needs a challenger. I mean, I mean, considering that you know there, there's still that big thing about the SummerSlam main event still needing to be seen to be believed. I'll it's wait. I'm, I'm. I'll wait. <laughs> what if? What, what if? Kofi does the impossible. Kofi versus Lesnar at SummerSlam? No. Kofi versus Big E. Ooh, okay. That might be something. Ooh, but that would have to be a reason. I don't think Big, Big E really yeah. needs a reason. Or rather, or rather, I should say, Big E no, defending against Kofi. Ooh. Interesting. It's an interesting thing. It won't happen, but... Something yeah, that... it, it, yeah, it's just stuff that got to make sense. It, it, to me, all those ideas are good if they make it make sense. Something that did happen on this show, Alexa Bliss defeated Shayna Baszler in 6 minutes and 55 seconds. Uh, this seemed like it was the Let Me Up match, even though it was kind of of a blow Honestly, I don't really know what to make of this. Considering Bliss beat baseball right cleanly. Kalika, you want to shed some light on it? Uh, then that tells me that that Bliss is about to get a visitor and it ain't going to be who she wants it to be. So, all right. Somebody will have to go to the store and get her some pads. <laughs> Oh wait! Oh, no, you were not, you, you were talking about that visitor. You were talking about the you know, the Crimson Tide. Not not Tom. <laughs> not but, uh, but 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 Don't yeah, you, that tells me Bray might be coming because they right. still got some shit to finish. And that's the problem. It's like a lot of loose ends that they kind of got left off that are like okay, some some of this shit's got to get finished eventually. Eventually. Let's pray eventually. Something that will never be finished eventually. Sami Zayn defeated Kevin Owens in 12 minutes and 39 seconds. Um, Basically, just so another Sami Zayn Kevin Owens match, right? Yeah. There's, there's, no, there's nothing to say. There really isn't. I mean... <laughs> Raw Women's Championship match. Rhea Ripley defeated Charlotte Flair. We have a disqualification. Wow. Yeah, roll. Uh, Turn it around. Oh, yes, you're right. Uh, Charlotte Flair defeated Rhea Ripley. Viva disqualification and 14. Viva disqualification. And Viva dis 11 seconds. So <laughs> sorry. Are you saying that Viva. Dave Meltzer is betraying me right now? Viva disqualification. No, um. <laughs> <laughs> Ripley and uh, Flair continue. Right move, uh, Spiro? Yeah. Yeah. Um, considering that Raw is putting their all their potential contenders in money in the bank. What's yep. you, Kaliko? Yep. I mean, either that or Charlotte gets to go, this bitch disqualified herself because she knows she couldn't beat me. That's where I was kind of mad about because if anybody needed a win over Charlotte, it, it would have been Rhea because of the simple fact that, A, she still got that WrestleMania hangover from getting her ass drug, drug by her. So to me... I see what they're trying to do, set up the money in a bank, Lynch comes back, but then what? Because, well, I mean, it's consider, definitely a storyline you want to extend between her and uh, Charlotte, considering she does have that loss well, over uh, her head. 
But the problem is it's going to become a triangle because technically they're in a square. They were in a square for a minute with Asuka, Nikki, Rhea, and Charlotte. Well, I mean, well, te- Not for the title per se, but... I mean, te- well, technically Nikki's out of it now, so... True. And, and now, now she's just money in the bank filler, but this uh, their rematch at Money in the Bank most likely is going to be the title contained chance by DQ or count out. Pretty much. And does, let me ask this, does Rhea Ripley need it to be a championship match against Charlotte to get that definitive win against her? Could it just be, you know? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes, because of the simple fact of of the history of her getting molly at Mania. Yes, it has to be. The same thing the same thing I said with Asuka. When Asuka lost to Charlotte at WrestleMania, and then they did those series of Asuka-Charlotte matches, and I was like, Asuka needs these wins because she needs to get back. And that's that's what Rhea needs. Rhea needs that payback. Next match, uh, WWE Hell in a Cell uh, Championship match. Bobby Lashley defeated Drew McIntyre in 25 minutes and 44 seconds. Uh, Drew McIntyre is out of the title picture for a little while. Uh, is that maybe a good thing or a bad thing, considering we're getting crowds in less than a month? Well, he's got a last chance qualifier for Money in the Bank on Monday. Thank you. So, hmm. AJ Styles, Randy Orton, and Drew McIntyre. Hmm. Do you wait? Oh, uh, do you wait until Bobby Lashley loses the belt to put him back in the picture, or does he need to a, slay that dragon? This is hmm, that's it. That's an, you know, I I don't know if Drew has to be Lashley anymore. But I mean, I can't, even if, you know, the rivalry ends here and he gets the championship back, Lashley still has that over his head, I, I think, that he I wasn't mean, able to beat him. Yeah, but don't forget back last, last year. True. I don't think anybody, I don't think WWE wants you to remember that. How about you, Kaliko? What are your thoughts? Um, honestly, he, to me, he's not going to win the last man, the last, the last, whatever, last chance match, because the story in the sense that was being told in the cell was that you couldn't beat me without MVP. So he sets up this hell in a cell with his stipulations to keep MVP out. When he knocked, when the ref got knocked down, Lashley called for the other ref, thus opening the gate, trying to get the benefit, but it also became his curse. It was Drew that called for the other ref. What was that? It was Drew that called for the other ref. That's what I said. That's what I said. When Drew called for the other ref for the count, it became his gift and the curse. Exactly. It became the blessing and, and the curse. So he did himself over. To me, he's done. Hey, hey, uh-huh. It does look like they're running on a, uh, you know, Drew is hitting a string of bad luck. Type Either of that or he's going heel because. Oh, no. uh. And the only reason I would say that, and the only reason I would even say that is because obsession is a motherfucker. Because now, especially with them trying to do these not really char- good guy, bad guy, but more shade of grayish, it would make sense where he thinks that he's doing the right thing and trying to do right by himself. But in actuality, he's fucking everybody over. Well, that begs the question. If Joe McIntyre is out of the title picture and, you know, Roman is obviously wrestling Cena. 
Um, Lastly, is having some type of match at the at the event. What does Drew McIntyre do? And is it a big match? Is it a marquee match? Or does he kind of just fade into the back at this point? That's um, the problem. That, that that that's that's a good question. I mean, maybe. Maybe we revisit Drew and Sheamus again. That's the for the U.S. title. That's the only. I mean, that's the only thing that would make sense. Like, because, yeah, where else would he go? Like, and th- that's the thing is that if that were to happen, McIntyre would have to lose to kick off that heel. Potential. I mean, or he'll he returns to teaming with Sheamus, Ooh. and you know we get you know a new a new, you know, a new you know United Kingdom stable. Oh God! Where we good on those? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I mean, I, yeah, it's, it's gonna oh, be hard. What a, ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. You know, they, if if you know Finn Balor can you know go back to NXT, why can't you have a brief stopover in NXT UK? Oh, so maybe like a Walter match? Bingo. Hmm. They just announced they were returning to England. That's true. The other thing that I could maybe think of is if Brock Lesnar is not in the title picture for SummerSlam, uh, no. maybe going up against the guy that gave him his last loss would be... No. Um, no, then no, because that, 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 that loss doesn't mean crap to Lesnar. It doesn't. It it, it 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 doesn't. Uh, at this point, Lesnar, if, if he returns at all, should be facing people he hasn't faced, or he should put over the ones he's beaten. What about? Um, but everyone he, hasn't everyone he's beaten he's put over, with the exception of like Ricochet, AJ, Ray. There's a lot of people I mean, he didn't put over. I mean, meaning that he should give them their yeah uh, their win back. I mean, we could see a Royal Rumble rematch for Drew. No, no, <laughs> Jesus, no. I mean, the other only alternative is Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> Anybody, I. I... It's just weird. It's just weird because we're just trying to figure out what they're going to do to try to build, bring SummerSlam back, or or to get to SummerSlam. I mean, um, I mean, I I would if they hadn't stuck him in a in a team with Riddle, I would have said Randy Orton. I think maybe Randy Orton and Riddle are going to be in the title picture in maybe for SummerSlam. I mean, oh, it's going to be a couple of tag teams in the title. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Randy Orton going to SummerSlam, you know, to face another BL. <laughs> well, and Riddle. I mean, if Riddle wins the Money in the Bank and. Randy Orton is the snake that he is. He could warm his way into a triple it, threat match for SummerSlam. Or mm. I, I, can, I can see Randy Orton manipulating Riddle into giving him the money in the bank. Exactly. But at some like, point, you know, Riddle yeah, is going to have to... I'll give you the key to your mouth if you give me the money in the bank. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I would. I wouldn't even considering all the ways we've seen it go down. 
that wouldn't be one of the worst ways. Alright, guys. Uh, Hell in a Cell pay preview. Thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs in the middle. Scoodle. Uh, it's like the thumb was severed but reattached just in time. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Then. Uh, <laughs> so you you, you 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 don't have you don't have full dexterity dexterity in it yet. You gotta wait. <laughs> Calico. That dude said uh, severed and then it's still dangling. It's like dangling. That's no, that's no. no I, said, I said it was severed but reattached in time. Oh god, so it had the, the what it beat the two hour that it needed to <laughs> um, Yeah, they 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 got in time, put it on ice and and uh you, you know uh, you know, Frankie Moni's dog didn't eat it. And it it wasn't a, a a mini sausage. None of the ivy fucked it up. Okay, we have a it. Uh it was a solid show. It wasn't their best show, but it it was a. It did what it needed to do, which is got everything co- moving. Either kept shit moving or ended shit. So it was a solid show. It wasn't like the greatest show. So eh, C, give it a C. We're not doing great. <laughs> it's thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs in the middle. That's what I said. Middle, average, C. Average. The main event saved it. Match of the night. Match of the night. Seth Cesaro in the main event. There you go. I'll give it. I'll give it a thumbs. Uh, a thumbs up. I thought it was a good show. And uh, that'll conclude our coverage of WWE Hell in a Cell. Uh, if you like what we're doing, please. Please like, subscribe, comment, both on YouTube and CastBox. Uh, join us this Wednesday as we interview Robin Renegade. You absolutely do not want to miss it. Uh, of course, this episode was sponsored by Rogue Energy. Use promo code Wrestling with E for 10% off your next purchase. Uh, and follow the show on. Uh, on Twitter and Instagram for everything wrestling with entertainment related uh, at wrestling with E. And you can follow us individually as well. I am at James J993. Uh, where can they find Coleco? You can find me trying to redo these dad jokes that I am Coleco. I'm trying. I'm, let me get you. Let me get one. And where can they find uh, Scooter? Of course, you can find me in the brightest day, in the blackest night. And if you want to find me on Twitter, it's at ScooterDust. And of course, check us out, twitch.tv slash Dragons. We, along with Rico Constantino Jr. and the other Dragons, play a whole bunch of games, Dungeons and Dragons, a whole load of stuff. Mario Golf's coming up this week. That's going to be fun. 20 sides to every story. Come be a part of ours. Twitch.tv backslash Smoking Dragons. Also, the remix, Money in the Bank, comes your way July 15th. Uh, I believe it's the 18th. 18th, yes. Uh, hopefully, it's still there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it wasn't ever there to begin with. <laughs> For Coleco Yacht, Scooter Dust, and James J, and this has been Wrestling with Walkers. Entertainment. Hey folks, this is the Colossal Mike Law, and you are listening to Wrestling with Entertainment. Enjoy the show, support these guys, we appreciate it very much. We'll see you at ringside.